how, how is this happening right now? Amy, let me start with you. You are on stage all the time. What advice do you have for these students as they take the stage? They just need to remember why they do what they do and who they do it for, and they're gonna wow us, I know it. I cannot believe how long it's been since I've sat in this office to make you a video. I'm actually in awe of it, and I started thinking about how crazy things have been. It made me want to sit down in just like a really gratuitous moment with you to talk about how to attract awesome and amazing and just more opportunities in your life. You probably have seen a lot of stuff from me lately, especially if you follow on Instagram. I just got back from a once in a lifetime opportunity in Cape Town, South Africa. I teamed up with the wonderful people at the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards, and they are actually sponsoring this video as well. They have been fantastic partners of Amy TV. They film a series on their YouTube channel called Start It Up. This was the second season, and it's essentially a documentation of this awards ceremony and competition, and I got to be, for the final round, the final six, entrepreneurs or studentpreneurs, I got to be one of the deciding judges. I think everyone really won because it was all about uplifting these student entrepreneurs. It wasn't about tearing them down. It wasn't about picking apart their business plan. It was about really giving liftoff to the people who have what it takes to not just be in business, but to see a vision through. And by the way, do make sure you're subscribed to their channel. They are putting some of the best content out there to motivate you, especially if you're an entrepreneur or a studentpreneur. So please click the link in the description below so that you can subscribe to GSEA and all the amazing content they have to come. More details about who won the series. I don't wanna spoil it for you. I want you to watch it because it's so fun. And I'm in the finale, so go check it out if you haven't already. But the link's below so you can learn more about the Global Student Entrepreneur. Awards. So when I thought about it and I'm like, this isn't just incredible that I got to have this experience. This is incredible that they get to have this experience. This is so fun to just watch back in the series on YouTube and like look at all the things we can learn from these people. And that's what made me get so inspired. What does it take to have really amazing opportunities? What type of person, who do you have to really emulate in order for you to feel a little bit luckier in your day to day. Sometimes when you start in a journey and your head is so clear of what you do, you don't really see where there's room to talk about yourself. But what's actually happening is one of the most important things you can do to attract more opportunities, to put yourself out there and tell your story. It's moments like this that are huge and easy to be very <laughs> full of gratitude for. There are other moments that might be smaller and you might have a lot of gratitude for them. All of it comes down to how well you tell your story. And everyone has a personal brand, no matter if you are looking for a better career track or nothing to do with work at all, or you are building a business and you're building a brand. We all have a personal brand. So when we're telling our stories, some of these highlights, some of these glimmers of hope that we can talk about for ourselves are not necessarily always moments to brag. It's more about moments that you let people know you got outside of your comfort zone, you tried something, you probably tried a lot of things because a couple things were successful and so you're gonna talk about the things that are really cool and successful and then there's other things that happen along the way but you have to have so many failures in between these big milestone moments. So by sharing those milestones, by putting yourself out there, by taking more chances, by applying for a competition, by venturing out to another country, by reaching out to somebody and offering them help, no matter what you think you may or may not be able to help them with, is the little things that you do to be able to build up who is this person. That shapes the fact that you will get more opportunities because the opportunities will find you as the right person. So think back for yourself, how well are you telling your story? What does it sound like? What 
uh, does your mood typically feel like when somebody hears your story? I think that will tell you a lot about the opportunities that may or may not have been coming your way. While you get caught up trying to figure out how to tell your story, you think about yourself a lot. There's a lot of ego involved when you're thinking of me and I and what have I done and am I good enough. In all actuality, only are those things going to matter when you've done number two and that's show up to serve. Everything you do every day, me sitting down to make this video every single time, a little part of it is for me. But if you read my first book, Vlog Like a Boss, you know that most of the reason I sit here is for you. And hopefully this video is helpful for you because if it is, then I definitely made it for you. Some people, it won't be for them. But when I show up for the right person every time and I deliver for them, and by delivering, I mean serve, share ideas, practicality, information, recommendations, things that actually apply to their life, your life, that's what it means to show up to serve when I am a video personality. There's so many ways to show up and serve. There's so many ways. You can give back, you can go to a soup kitchen. You can just show up to your job on time and give your boss your undivided attention to find out how you can best do your work. There are so many ways to show up and serve when you take yourself out of that main seat of who needs to be pleased. At the end of the day, do we all wanna be happy and we wanna be pleased? Of course. There are things we have to do to navigate that and make that happen. And so when you show up to serve, you are miles ahead of most people trying to figure out how to be happy because you're not making it about you, you're making it about who you can help. And that is a level of fulfillment that I think we all strive for in so many ways. Number three is going to sound vague. And also maybe a little woo-woo. You know that word, woo-woo, like ooh. I, some people are woo-woo, some people aren't woo-woo. I feel like I'm like somewhere in between with the woo-woo. I'm like, oh shoot, just when I thought I wasn't woo-woo-y enough, <laughs> something real woo-woo happens. I have been in a place in my life many times where I've had to overcome my own rigidity, my own rules, my own type A-ness, my own things that just keep me in the lines. And that is why number three is so important because it's to be open and be ready. This opportunity to go to South Africa originally was not supposed to happen for me. And that's okay. It wasn't gonna work out. But I just had this feeling and I covered my bases in a couple of ways. And with less notice than one would think <laughs> in terms of going to Cape Town, I got the call and suddenly the opportunity was back in my court. The only reason why I share that minute detail is because it was a symbol to me of how intuitive I am about what I know is possible for me. And it may not always happen exactly the way it needs to happen. It may not always be with all the ducks in a row. It may not be perfect, but if you can be ready and be open for the process to change, some really wild stuff can happen. And it's because I was ready and because I was open to the fact that things could go a little different that I was even able to be a part of this experience. And I'm sure that's happened to you where you just thought, I never would have known this was coming in a million years or I never would have thought I could have been able to do that or I, or I didn't get it at first and then suddenly it still happened. You've probably had something like that, big or small. It's because you were ready and open that it ended up happening. I'm a cute little introvert. I like my introvert time. And I don't always reach out to people. I, when I tend to be very much in my bubble, I'm a hermit and I forget to call people. And my best friend will be like, are you there? And my mom will be calling. Like, I just, that's just how I am. And I'm getting better at it. But that's why number four is big, because no matter what personality type you are, if something amazing happens or something small, like literally anything, a networking event, goes pretty okay. You have to follow up with the people that you meet. You never, ever, ever know who you're gonna know. And the more people you know, the more access you have to opportunities happening absolutely anywhere for any reason. And you know what? Not all of those opportunities are gonna be for you. Not all of them are gonna be right for you and that's okay. If you can connect somebody else to an opportunity because you know someone and you become the epicenter of that network, that's pretty cool and that creates more opportunities. But to increase the ones that come your way that are right for you, 
It's about being open, being ready, telling your story and showing up to serve and letting people know about it. Letting people know you do these things so that when they find out about something, they can bring it straight to you. I was just scribbling down. You, you see it on the show. You'll see that I'm on the iPad. I'm doing my survey as these guys are pitching in the awards. And I'm like typing my email address because I'm like, please let me know how I can support you. I just want to know you. I just, you are the student entrepreneur doing big things and I'm sitting here judging you. But just so you know, no matter what happens here, please get in contact with me and please let me know how I can support you. If for some reason you're a student entrepreneur in the awards and you are watching this video and you didn't see that, please reach out to me. I wanted everyone to be able to come to me and ask any follow-up questions or ask me what they wanted to learn about me because we weren't allowed to get to know each other prior to the competition. It really had to be locked down. So that's just one little way that I'm saying, hey, I'm not gonna sit here on my high horse and be a judge. I wanna talk to you, I wanna get to know you. Whether or not I can ever serve those people in another capacity again, just being open and staying in touch will go very far. Ideally, <laughs> I mean, in that case, I'm still yet to be seen, but in my experience, somebody I met at the first networking event I'm sorry, was it my first conference? Some, my, one of my first events ever. That person got me my highest paid speaking gig in my career up to that point, 10 years later. And that's what comes down to just being in touch with somebody. Pay attention to what people are doing who are receiving opportunities that feel good to you. If the opportunity feels good to you, there's really no reason to feel bad about the person that got it. They're simply proving it's possible. There's no reason to be jealous, although keeping a jealousy journal can be kind of good if you use it for good. Because if you write down something that you might be jealous about, you learn a little bit about what you really want for yourself. Or you could go back to it and say, I don't even know why I said that, that was stupid. I was just being dumb jealous in the moment. You can do a lot of introspection with something like that. Know that just because somebody gets to do something doesn't mean it's been taken from you. The more we think that way, the less opportunities come to us because we are emulating a scarcity mentality and we are shutting the world off. Pay attention to the right mindset point for you of what people are doing so that you can see how did that work? How are they telling their story? Who do they know? Who do they keep in touch with? Who do they engage with? Who do they promote? Who do they help? How do they help? What are they doing to serve? You don't need to copy someone to see how somebody might be making something happen for them. You can find out just by observing a lot of the time with the internet, what they promote, what they're posting, what they do to attract those opportunities. Guess what? It goes back to number one most of the time. It's not about the person that's done the most, had the most amazing, it's just how well you tell your story. It's why somebody with a thousand followers can be an influencer. Because when you are so clear on what you do well and you're not afraid to talk about it, people wanna work with you. That was really fun. We haven't done like a chill, like chatty video in a while. And that is really all that I feel from myself, from a, a deep place of gratitude for how amazing this opportunity was. I am so, so grateful. And I took so much video and photos of my time. I do want to share a little bit of it with you, but is as much as it was only four days in Africa, I never would have imagined a trip to Cape Town would have been like that, but it was once in a lifetime and I will never forget it. Thanks again to the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards and the amazing team on the Start It Up series. It was an incredible experience and please have me back. <laughs> it was so fun. And uh, you guys, please make sure you subscribe to their YouTube channel and make sure you watch the whole series and see the incredible work people are doing so that that can inspire you of how you do your best work and show up to serve. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love and go after the life you want. Cheers.